another D&D video, because that's currently what I really have the inspiration for. So, if you want to make your own campaign, or maybe even looking for some inspiration for a future character, I guess this might help. Because I want to have a little talk about how to make a setting your own, how to make fantasy truly yours. And mainly, how to do it without having to be some crazy world-building madman genius like someone like Tolkien was. How can you do it while being just an average Joe, an average twat in the world? And I think that there are definitely ways to do it. This might be some very mild spoilers for the people in my campaign, but I don't think it will be... I don't think it will be too obvious. It will take some time before you even get to it, if I ever decide to include it. You see, the simplest thing, the simplest way I think there is to really make fantasy, or really any setting, but especially for your fantasy, the easiest way to make it your own is by combining things. Now, of course, combining things isn't particularly clear, so let's take an example. The example that kind of made me want to make this video. So, what do you think of when I say Kirin? It's a mythological beast that has quite a range of depictions in a variety of medias. Their origins are from a Chinese mythological beast, monster, or thingy. D&D has their own kind of adaptation of it, making them a, if I remember correctly, quite a powerful celestial. Though other people might remember them from a, I think they only appeared once, but an appearance in My Little Pony, where Honest to God, that's one of my favorite and most hated episodes because it has a brilliant message that I utterly despise at times, but I really love it still. And all of these, of course, have their own, well, myths attached to them. But here's a trait that I noticed. At least in the adaptations that I have seen, they have this thing with water. So, apparently, in the mythology, at least from what I can quickly gather from Wikipedia, which is about all the research I've done into that, because honestly it's irrelevant, they had a tendency to be depicted as walking over clouds or walking on water. The ones in D&D have the ability that the area around their lair, all the water is completely purified, completely healthy. Now, of course, the big plot point in My Little Pony was that there was a spring or a stream next to it that took away someone's ability to talk, to communicate. And then I remembered something else, which is apparently more unknown than I would have expected. Anyone ever heard of Del Tora? Don't know if I have the pronunciation that most people would give it. But they were a series of children's books. In book 5, they come across the Crin. Now, what I thought that was, was kind of just, well, I thought I remembered it as kind of just a Dutch version of this Kirin type of monster. And just to be clear, I say monster as kind of a general word not as definitely negative because I don't like inherent negativity in general. But I misremember them as kind of being the same creature, mainly because they also have this very special water. Well, they don't have it directly, but they are very closely linked to it in the book. It's, if you want to really figure that one out, read the books, but they're children's books, so who knows. 
Now apparently I was horribly wrong. I picked up the book, I looked up where they met one of them and the description of them that I remember is not the description they have in the book. Because I'm an idiot. But this does give me kind of three creatures that in my mind are at least very closely related. One of them purifies the water around them. The other has water that takes away your voice. And the third has water that takes you wherever you want to go, wherever you are thinking of in your dreams after you drank it. And also, it is a terrible poison to evil. These three can be combined. They can be combined to make something very interesting. So I would say that if I ever was to use a Kirin in my world, their regional effect would not be that all the water in their area is purified. Instead it's turned into... Well, probably it will have a better name at that point, but what I'll now refer to as Kirin water. This water is a terrible, paralyzing poison towards anything evil, towards fiends, or possibly even anything with evil alignment, which would definitely make it interesting. Any good creature will basically dream wherever they want to be. In their dreams they will be teleported to wherever they want to basically be wherever they're thinking of. And any who consume it lose their ability to speak for a certain amount of time. Possibly a day, maybe a week, depending on how terrible I want to make it. Probably not a week, but definitely makes it interesting. Suddenly this water might be a plot point unto itself. They might never come across the Kirin, they might just come across a bottle of Kirin water, which is a terrible poison towards things that are evil, will allow other creatures to kind of, kind of the clairvoyance spell, is it the clairvoyance spell? Whatever, it's the spell that allows you to see wherever you want in your dreams, but removes your ability to talk. This would be a very interesting plot point. It wouldn't be something that your party would take just on a whim, because, you know, they lose the ability to speak. And if the water deems them as evil, it will be hella deadly. But it's also free clairvoyance. And of course, it will be wholly unique. Who on earth will have something like this? Now, Probably people who watch this video and say, holy shit, that's cool. Probably not a lot of people. But it will definitely be something that they wouldn't have prepared for. And that will really make you stand out, will make your game stand out. Because it has things like this in it that's not found in any other setting. And remember, this is lazy as fuck. Because, hey, the Kirin... Their ability to change water, that's right out of the monster manual. I don't think it's the monster manual, I think it's Volo's Guide to Monsters. Whatever, it's right out of one of the D&D books. The water that takes away your ability to speak? Yeah, that's literally out of My Little Pony. I don't know if you can really be called very creative when you're literally stealing plot points from My Little Pony. Like, I love the show, but I'm literally stealing an idea from it. I don't think that can ever be considered at least very creative. And the dream water, well, once again, that's literally just stolen from a book. And it's not even accurate. It's not even a Kirin. It's a very different beast that just has a name that I vaguely remember as being quite like the Kirin. Yet, this quite lazy combination of things makes for something that I think would definitely be interesting. And you can use this with other things as well. You can pick some random things from mythology or whatever you heard anywhere really. And you can kind of either combine it with something else or depending on what it is, you can take it and just make it a unique thing. 
for instance. Once on Twitter, I came across somebody who who said something about the Lingba. Probably mispronounced that, but who cares? A giant whale in Icelandic mythology that it just has a very small, at least from what I've been able to find, very small appearance in some heroic person's tale. That was apparently a whale that was massive and played like it was an island, and if people ever went on it, it would go under the water and anyone on it would have drowned. That's so easy to make a setting. Like, you find an island with something special on it. I don't know, maybe a temple, maybe a big monster. Who cares? And when they go to leave, or when someone stabs their sword into the ground, or I don't know, whatever, doesn't matter. Suddenly, the island begins to sink. It's not very creative, it's literally just, hey look, it was apparently in some old book once. Let's literally just steal that, because it worked there, or... Even then, there it was barely a plot point, it was just, oh yeah, that's over there. At least that's how I managed to find it on Wikipedia. It was just, oh yeah, that was a thing they came across. But, you can make it quite interesting. And depending on how devious you want to be, you can lift some names from the story too, to just make it... Well, not obvious, but in hindsight, just... Oh yeah, you know these names? Yeah, they were from this story. If you looked up those names in Google, you would have found this story and you would have found the big plot twist. But honestly, that's just for... Kind of nerd creds, just... Hey guys, look what I managed to think up that you didn't manage to figure out, because obviously you didn't. Here's another idea that you can... I guess kind of use. Kind of an example of how you can quickly kind of look some stuff up, kind of try to figure some stuff out. And combine some things that maybe should, probably shouldn't be combined, to make an interesting encounter that you can probably find some way to justify. I mean, if you're the DM, you can definitely make it work. So, for this, in your game, you would want something like a very powerful Gorgon. And when the party manages to finally beat it, make sure that they cut off the head in some way. Maybe they blow up the head, maybe the fighter cuts the head off. I don't know. Not really relevant. And then, when this Gorgon is defeated, out of its next stump, an angel comes out, showing as being the reason why the beast was so powerful. The angel was powering, was basically the all-powerful holy battery for this powerful Gorgon. The hilarious thing of this one is, it kind of has historical, well, mythological backing, except that all the details of it are kind of wrong. You see, a Gorgon originally wasn't a metal bull whose breath turned people to stone. Originally, Gorgon was the type of thing Medusa was. And some people at this point are figuring it out, especially if they watched Overly Sarcastic Productions. By the way, watch Overly Sarcastic Productions, you twats. Because when the Gorgon Medusa was slain, out from her neck stump came Pegasus. But at the same time, or at least in some tellings, at some tellings it's kind of from Medusa's blood falling into the ocean, others it's immediately from the head stump. But alongside Pegasus was born Chrysaur. No chance I pronounced that right. Sorry, I don't speak ancient Greek. Which roughly translates into he who has a golden sword. And combine that with some of the kind of the depictions that we have of this uh, Chrysor, which definitely is a name you can also just steal for that angel then, would really work with making them an angel or some other form of celestial. It has mythological backing, it's a plot twist that can definitely make sense because, well, 
It's a world with wizards and other crazy stuff. You're saying there isn't a wizard who can imprison a celestial into a gorgon to make that gorgon stupidly powerful? Of course there is. And Honestly, who is going to predict this? Who is going to predict that when you slay the gorgon, Kresavar will come out? No one, not even the people who know the myth will see death coming because it's so crazy while being so not predictable but so mythologically backed up even if all the details are wrong. That's why I love it. You can make things work, you can make it unique by combining things that kind of fit together, except they really don't. That's kind of the fun of D&D, isn't it? So yeah, if you want to make fantasy your own, kind of work to combine things from different places. Does it have to make sense? It has to make sense in universe, at least I think so, but it doesn't have to make sense outside of the universe. And it doesn't have to be extremely logical because, well, it's fantasy. Welcome to fantasy. Things don't have to make sense because, well, it's the entire point of fantasy, isn't it? And it will definitely make things unpredictable in what feels like predictable ways. So yeah, if you ever tried something like this, or if you try something like this, let me know how it, what you're planning, or how it went. This has been Phoenix. Saying farewell. Mm -hmm.